Our journey continues. We fend off dragons, vikings, kings and queens and press on to become even more successful. Today we continued our journey and played another 100 days of kingdoms and castles. It got a bit reckless. We got off to a truly fiery start and we got alerted of a terrifying dragon making its way over. We managed to pelt it with our defences and eliminated it from our skies. Oh, the lovely Queen Pouchet. Welcome, as always, my beloved ally. Yes, we both love a bit of pork. This is all part of the plan. With war still apparent, higher walls were needed. The continued population push is still very much in effect. The piers are done. Let's get some more walls. The merchant ship arrived at our docks once more and we were able to make a solid 1,000 gold. We were really short on meat storage, so we slotted another butcher's in. The ongoing defences get better with more archer towers. In year 104, a new diplomat was en route. Whilst waiting, a third transport ship was commissioned. As our population increases, so does our demand for resources. Let's get some more farms in. A tower to cover the docks. We are also still producing more meat than I could store. Another butcher was needed. The time had also come for a large hospital. Finally. Then, once again, a merchant. I managed to make another quick mint. Oh, crazy queen lady had arrived, and further demand I pay a bunch of gold for her to stop the war. The war I was winning. <laughs> no chance, lady. It was the year 107. The Viking invaders had landed on our shores. The rain of arrows were now able to dish out and did render any attack pretty useless. As the quote from one of my favourite movies goes, our arrows will blot out the sun. 10 points to whoever can finish the quote for me. Go on down in the comments. Another wave of the big boys tried their best, but they didn't even make it to the walls before suffering the same fate. From war, straight into woodcutting. The time for expansion is now. The planned extension was also laid out with two rows of timber to remove before we could do it. We are still keeping up with the ever-growing need to farm. Our first test of assault was here. We took the opportunity to sail over to the Crazy Queen's lands and do a little scouting to see what we were up against. Basics on the coast, what I did see indicated that she was a bit behind us and the only wooden walls defending her. I proceeded to find out a little spot to unload the troops and try to move a little inland. We proceeded to go directly into hand-to-hand -hand combat on her shores. A fair amount of fighting occurred. It seemed to last forever, with most infantry wiped from the island and a few towers, all I was left with from siege equipment. We did our best to keep them alive and even managed to take some more units with us. We also got some great information about our enemy which will prove to be incredibly useful in the years to come. Once back on our mainland we got going with more recruitment. We also continued with more height on the walls to ensure we could defend. Also did a bit more zone work for expansion. We did the usual when the merchant arrived and sold 1,200 golds worth of coal. The walls continued to rise higher and higher. With the lines of chopping complete, we managed to plan the expansion of the walls. I also decided it was time to just remove all of the trees in that section. King Mathens, the diplomat, came asking for help. 
but I had to tell him no. The relationship was getting rocky. Then my favourite lady arrived and the difference is absolutely crazy. This time she gave us a massive gift. The meat was still flying in more than we could store so a new butchers went in. Also moved the archers over to the training area. The new expanded corner got a little more love with more wall scaling in preparation to demolish the old walls. We smashed down the old walls and the room was beautiful. Another big sale was made. After all these years, I was yet to speak to the advisors. I had a quick chat to see what they recommended and mostly it was stuff we were already doing. With supplies booming, I added a new theater for the people. Then replaced the Great Hall. With the city health and happiness in good shape, it was time to look into our military might a little more. This started with placing more transport ships. Now we had the resources, why don't we spend them? Building operations were queued for loads more walls. Higher is better. A new tower too, and some more housing as population was maxed. The coal trick on the merchant was beautiful. My favourite ally had arrived with a diplomat. To be honest, she had just come to tell me to build some merchant ships. <laughs> Go away. More archer towers going in. The only food source we were struggling with was fish. So let's fix it. Once the fish hut was in, we spent some time making sure our road network was all upgraded. There was also demand for more taverns. The alarms rang for a dragon attack. This one looked different. We switched our training focus to more swordsmen as the dragon wasn't attacking. It was time to look into getting the great library. This thing was huge. We made some room by demolishing and got it placed. Then we got a church placed also. The amount of farms we had means we needed to scale the storage. Our army was coming along nicely and the invasion prep was planned. While sorting my army, I hadn't realised that the evil queen had started to send forces over once more. We made quick work of them like always with our raining arrows. Two more ships made their way over. Only to be met by the same fate over and over again. At some point she should be thinking that she can't penetrate our defences and give up. Well, you'd think anyway. By now, I had also realised that the Great Library was capable of providing research. We couldn't quite spare the gold at the moment, but it was a good thing to know. Queen Pouchet, my friend. I now had the option to share a feast with visitors because we had the Great Hall. We ate a delicious pork meal and then proceeded to discuss pointless business. See ya! We moved on and began loading troops into our ships, ready for departure. Whilst doing that, the Vikings had landed on our eastern shores and even managed to get into the walls. We rearranged some archers and had enough defence to fend it off relatively easy. We did kill a couple of villagers though. The time had come to send forth our armies towards the evil queen. We landed and moved inland to see what was going on. We were met by a few archer towers, but our siege equipment was able to deal with it pretty quickly. There was also a lack of soldiers on the island. I think it's because we recently defended our walls against all her forces. We moved inland, gradually taking out supply chains and defences to secure that corner of the island. We continued this on with not much resistance. Dent to her economy was devastating. To simultaneously build and prosper, we took the opportunity to ensure further expansion was ongoing back at home. Once again, we checked in and continued to ransack the farms of the evil queen. Something tells me she isn't going to be a threat much longer. Back at home, we planned for more expansion. We continued to rip through the evil Queen's Island until our dying breath. This moved into all housing on her island too. 
We were annihilating the evil queen that much that the other rulers started to speak on her behalf. I told them no, even though she wanted to pay me to stop. Back at home, the walls went higher. And at this point, we had wiped half of her island out, but only had a few troops left over there. I continued to order them to flatten everything, though. Back at home, more butchers once again. And straight into training another five swordsmen. I was kind of enjoying just leveling everything. We quite literally took every building down whilst we could. She was crippled. Back at home, our sights were set on a new large expansion. Paths and shopping commissioned. As well as a bunch of rock removals. The Vikings had once again landed on our western shores, which was our strongest zone. They marched an attempt to breach there through our gates, taking some build sites down along the way. They did manage to break the gate down, but not before they were decimated by our archer arrows. Following this, we continued to chop and plan, and once again added to our defensive walls. Then, the expansion foundation, left and right. We were still fighting with just one siege unit on the crazy queen's island. Now the rocks were removed, we added roads. I also thought it was a good idea to fill out all the eastern water with piers. A little more walls on the expansion, then went in, and some more piers once again. By this point we had trained a nice secondary army. We switched training back over to the siege units. I actually decided against my initial expansion plans, and went a bit further out. We were still slowly edging more and more inland on Evil Queen's base. Once again, there was plenty of dollar to make when the merchant arrived. Thank you very much. Low on stone from all the walls, we placed another quarry. We had finally cleared the whole half of her island and decided to move a little more inland. We moved a little into the unknown and lost both siege engines instantly. Hey Pouchet, hope all is well. We grabbed a quick pork meal and she proceeded to tell me her darkest secret about how she liked to dress as a peasant and sneak around at night. A very promiscuous lady, if you ask me. I promise not to tell though, and she definitely liked me for it. Back at business, there was a lot of building to do, so I decided to ramp up the amount of builders at any one time to 120. This should cover the expansion project a lot quicker. We watched slowly as King Mathan sent a diplomat over to have a chat. I fed them a lovely meal and we got down to business. Turns out he was coming to ask for peace on behalf of the crazy queen. I simply couldn't accept, which then led to Mathan going on to declare war on me. I say bring it on. I've plenty to fight with, and with the queen on the ropes, I could handle it. Before you knew it, he had two boatfuls on their way for blood. At the same time, the dragon wanted a piece of me. Get out of here. King Mathan's troops landed at my self walls and the archers were in position. The arrows were released and we made light work of all of his forces. This time he had dropped two units off at my west wall. This was our strongest point and they got thousands of arrows in their face before they could retaliate. Over on the east side of the base, I began to plan the road network over the piers. As well as a new opening. A trader arrived in year 148, 660 coins. I then also queued up some more research from the Great Library for improved bread ovens. Over by our original iron mine, the water area was very open and I didn't like it. This needed patching so we were fully closed off. In go some pier pieces to allow us to plan more walls. Next, I readied the soldiers by the boats. Once loaded, we moved them into position. Once ready, the final zoning of the West Expansion Wall was planned. The time had come to place more housing in the new expanded area. Here he goes again, Mathan and his troops made another push on the South Wall to meet the exact same fate as before. My defences were impenetrable so far. These walls have lasted 150 years. We swiftly moved to the offensive with three boats full of troops. 
We quickly noticed that she had started to rebuild. I organized the troops and set them up for destroying everything once more. Onto the gate! As we marched on the stone gate, we uncovered more archer towers that started to pelt us. We rearranged and focused our attacks towards the towers we could reach. The second tower was in the sights of our siege kit. We unloaded some boulders to make quick work of this and moved on once more to the gate. Back at home, the Vikings had landed and we were attacking our walls. Archers, be ready! With some buildings remaining outside of the Queen's walls, we switched focus to eliminate them. By this point, the Queen's economy was in bits and she was struggling to pay her remaining defenders. We switched focus to her army, producing buildings. Back at home, King Mathan tried his luck again, but failed. This quickly followed with him groveling at my feet for the war to end. I said no, as we were ready to wipe the floor with him too. The remaining parts of the expansion walls get put in next. We also noticed that no defences were in place for this corner, so we began stacking walls to gain a solid defensive position. We were at year 154, which is crazy. Our eastern edges were ready to be walled off across the water, so we planned them out ready. After a quick check in with my advisors, I realised I needed more stockpiles. In year 155, Queen Pouchet came once more. I fed her her favourite meal and she had brought me a really generous gift. We sealed off more walls and worked on the extra defences on our western side. The eastern walls also had a bit more scale and extra defences added. It was year 158, and I noticed some peasants weren't happy. Turns out they wanted a bit more ale. Ah, <sighs> just look at it. Look at the kingdom we've built so far. We had spare cash for some more research and went ahead and got upgraded ballistas. I kind of felt sorry for this dragon doing a flyover. He got absolutely obliterated by so many arrows. Ah well, more walls please. There's something really satisfying about just sitting and watching the harvest come in. In year 160, I took a look at some decorations and put down a chunky statue. Not sure why. I also took a look into the cathedral. Turns out it has a chance of converting attacking Vikings into peasants as well. Let's queue up more catapults. We then grabbed our three full ships and once again pressed on to the Queen's Island. We landed and marched. We continued smashing through. Back at home, King Mathan's diplomats came and he was only demanding surrender. No way, old boy. No way. On the Queen's Island, we pressed on with the infantry to take the brunt of the towers. The siege kit continued to level whatever they could. Back at home, we continued to sell. It was year 162, and a fair few Viking brutes had landed on our western shores. They marched on the walls, absorbing every arrow we could sling. They kept coming and managed to take down a section of the wall. Once they got further in, they were met by some serious firepower that was able to eliminate them from existence. By this point, it was time to acknowledge that a second layer of walls would be a good idea to prevent breaches whilst we were on the assault. It was time to finally remove the inner walls and open us up to a bit more space to build. We just now got our first real fire brigade. In goes a nice chunk of extra walls to pad us. Still poking away at her. It was time to replace the foresters. Long overdue. We continued the exterior wall prep, then got straight into loading the ships with troops once more. Well, this was cute. King Mathan had arrived with just two groups of units. What was he going to achieve against our might with that? To the shores we sailed, offloading the troops to finish the job. 
Once on the Evil Queen's Island, we began leveling every building until we reached the keep. Down were the towers, barracks, war buildings. The keep pelted our foot soldiers and wiped them out. It was time to back off with the siege equipment again and prepare to finish the job once more. Back at home, I noticed the cemetery was full. It was time for another. I nestled one on the outside of the wall. A pleasant visit was had from Queen Pouchet, where she told me all about going to drink in taverns in disguise. She truly was a woman of the people. Our population was nearly maxed at 736 people, so a few manor houses was a good idea. I also demolished the remainder of the wall, which would provide a nice chunk of space. I like the look of this statue, so I got it prepped. Then more walls placed and some piers to bolster. With more troops sent over to the front lines. It was time to attack the keep head on and tank it. Unfortunately, they were wiped quite quickly from the keep. With everything going on, it was time to treat the people to something really special. The Jousting Arena. As always, the walls never stop growing. Up and up some more. More meat storage. And more walls again. Oh, the Jousting Arena. Hello, you beauty. Alright, we are ready to pummel the remains of the Evil Queen into the ground. I landed on the shores once more and set everyone full sprint towards the keep to take it out. We hacked and shot, and finally we managed to end the Evil Queen's reign. I will be honest, I didn't really have much of a clue with what I was doing on the new island. I started to build a few things after taking over though, either way. The remaining people on the island were not happy. <laughs> As the Vikings were roaming, I couldn't really defend it on the new island. I decided to start fresh and demolished every single building. Sometimes it's best to build from nothing. With our remaining troops from the previous battle, I sailed over to King Mathen's island to see what was what. Turns out he has a big army of archers waiting for me. Eh, let's reconsider this. I managed to scramble away with a couple of units on my boats. I had also noticed some small buildings just sat on the island. Turns out there are witches in the game. On the new island, I, I placed a fresh outpost. Once that was built, I started some real basic buildings over here. We also had King Mathan taking some pot shots at us on the new island. This place really didn't matter too much though. Back at main base, I continued to scale all of the walls on all sides, and scaled some corners up for more towers. Back over on the new island, they were so unhappy. I wasn't ready to deal with it, if I'm honest. Oh, my beloved. Thanks again for the gifts. You really don't have to. Up next, I flipped the training over to a bunch more archers. The time had come to prep our army for another attack. With all the forces going forward, it was time to further reinforce home. Let's sail! Ah, the final piece of research. Stronger sails. Andy, it's time. On the shores of Mathan, the treacherous snake. Here we go. His soldiers press us and we retaliate, taking them down one by one. We plough through the archer towers, dotted around and take a foothold on his island. Time is now. This fight was about to open us up to everything. I sent the boats back home. 
and we managed to micro every last soldier to all attack different buildings and started the renovations. They crumbled around us. The fires burn and the push is here. We focused our soldiers on any units he tried to send and onto the towers in the back. And down it goes. Though the plan was to cripple the economy, we started to burn the farms to the ground. Back at home, we prepped some more housing. And lots of fresh troops. Oh, King Mathan, you chose the wrong person to side with. We plan on leaving you with no way of recovering. I am the king. Back at home, more walls. Ooh, and a dragon. This is my land and I'll pierce your face. As it was able to successfully get away, I built another ballista this end. Back over on our small island we had built way too quick and the population wasn't big enough. They were also very unhappy. A merchant arrived with some special rugs. Only 125 gold. Helps during winter. The walls were a continuous thing, with permanent height always being a thing. Up and up. Back over at King Mathan's Island, we only had one archer unit left. We loaded our ships once again. By this point, the scale of our island was incredible and it looked fantastic. Oh, here we go. My defense make the Vikings look like child's play now. There's something kind of fun about just watching ships sail through and get peppered by arrows. Turns out them Vikings were sailing towards my second island, so I pulled my advancing troops over to defend. They mopped them up pretty quickly. Right, let's get back onto moving towards Mathan's Island once again. This time we had siege engines with us to try and wipe out some buildings a little quicker. We went to work and started laying down the law. Hard. We had some soldiers ready on the island, but my infantry rushed them and sliced them down almost instantly. It was year 197. The whole corner was almost leveled. We must push on. One after another, they crumble. Back at home, the army size is forever increasing. At this point, the king was as good as dead. Continued to show no mercy and just kept going. On and on. Maybe. I'm the evil one? It was the year 200 and I just couldn't bring myself to stop. I was becoming hungry for war. To be continued. Continued. 